Okay, hi there, I'm Carl at Escape Trailer, where we build for you. Remember, Escape Trailer is a direct-to-consumer fiberglass trailer manufacturer. We make a one-piece fiberglass structure. Beautiful. This is part one of a two-part video. In part one, I'll just give you a quick tour around, give you a quick explanation for about this trailer, and then part two, we'll get into a lot more detail. If you have any questions or want more information about the options that are available in the Escape Trailer, remember, we have a base unit, and then we have a whole lot of options. We have more options than any other manufacturer in North America, over 130 options that you can choose from. You can really make this trailer for you. That's why we're built for you. Okay, let's talk about this fifth wheel. So this fifth wheel, 21 foot two overall length. It's 5,500 pounds GVWR. It is a beautiful, sleek, glossy trailer. Nicely aerodynamic. Fits very well in the back of a half ton truck. In fact, we designed it around the F-150 trucks and um, the Chevy, you know, the, the Silverados or the 1500s and the Toyota Tundras. They all work very nicely with this, um, with this fifth wheel. So she's 21 foot two. Long down to the rear, down to the rear bumper. It has a tandem axle on it. And let's go and have a look on the inside. So it's six foot four to seven foot tall on the inside. Just for reference, I'm about six foot, just over six foot three. So we'll go and have a look inside. Come join me. Okay, door open. Gonna talk very quickly before I jump up on the bed here. So very quickly, within the escape trailer, you have three different ty types of, of walls to choose from. This is what we call our contemporary. Then we have, we have oak and we have maple. You have seven different types of flooring and seven different types of formica to choose from and three different types of trim. And that's really what makes the Escape Trailer personalized for you. Remember, there's no other, no other RV manufacturer in North America that offers the level of personalization and customization that we do at Escape. But anyway, this is a bit of a size check. I'm six foot three inside this trailer. This is a custom, um, custom pocket coil mattress that we have made specifically for our Escape fifth wheel. I'm gonna go jump up on this bed and you can get to see, you get to see how, how big it is and how comfortable it is. It is super comfortable. It is super comfortable. I love sleeping in these in these beds. So here I am sitting down, it's nice and comfortable. I got lots of space and I got really easy access to my storage up here. And then we also have some storage down to the, the right on the sides that we will use quite effectively indeed. When I use this fifth wheel, we have our totes that we will put down along the side and that just gives us that extra, that extra storage. You know, camping is all about maximizing the storage space that you, that you have. Let's walk inside the, the bathroom, the important ones. Jump inside the bathroom. The bathroom in our fifth wheel is over six foot three tall. So I've got plenty of height in this bathroom. It's really nice. And then width wise, you know, I'm comfortable in here. You know, I quite comfortably can shower in here. And then no one's sitting, you know, I'm in the shower here for, for 20 minutes or anything. It's a quick wash off, clean up and, and move on because you have your water capacity to, uh, to consider at the same time. All right, so we fit beautifully in the shower area. And the last place that we have, just the other side of our kitchen is our dinette. So our dinette also converts to a bed. These are four inches deep. Some nice, um, nice comfortable cushions. Not too soft, but lovely. So when I lie down on this bed, it is comfortable. It's real nice. Actually feels good on my back. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I nearly lost myself there in thought. It's very comfortable. And now we'll go to part two. And welcome to part two. This is the detailed walkthrough for the Escape 5.0. Before we get started here, I want to highlight our customization and personalization. We offer unparalleled customization and unlimited personalization to make your trailer built for you. So first we'll talk about the personalization because even at the base trailer level, we build for you by allowing you to choose your own look for the inside of the trailer. We have three different choices for your wood oak, maple, and contemporary. And very quickly talking about the construction of this cabinetry. All the walls are made of material called Maranti or Luan plywood, which then has a photo finished laminate put on top. And all of your cabinet and drawer doors are made of real wood. So for the oak, it's oak. And for the maple and contemporary, they are maple. You also have seven different standard choices for your fabric, formica, and flooring, as well as four different choices for your trim around your tabletops. 
These three choices for wood, seven choices for fabric, formica, and flooring, and four choices for trim are all included with the base price of the trailer. Now, if you wanted to have your own custom fabric, formica, or flooring put into the trailer, please email us at sales at escapetrailer.com and we can get you started. As far as customization goes, we have a whole slew of options to build your trailer just how you like it. This video is going to show you what the base features and options look like inside the trailer. If you'd like to learn more about them and see if they're the right fit for you, be sure to check the description down below where you've got some links to our base features and options walkthroughs. These are really handy and they go through each base feature and option. Now we'll move into the detailed walkthrough. We'll start here at the rear passenger side. The standard below this marker light is to have no outlet. The option is to have the 12 volt slash USB exterior outlet just below that marker light, and this is powered directly from the batteries. Moving on from here, we have our next option, which is the exterior access hatch. This accesses to underneath the passenger dinette bench. Just to the right, you have the standard 120 volt exterior outlet. Down below, we have the standard rear stabilizer jacks. These have a three quarter inch socket. It comes with a provided tool. It makes it nice and easy to lower or raise your stabilizer jacks. Moving on here, we have the option of frameless windows. These are double glazed thermal windows with bug screens. They are also tinted. These are top hinged awning style opening windows. They open up three inches at the bottom. And here's a nice look at how they open up. So you've got this knob that you turn and it allows you to easily open up the window. And these are the standard, which are framed windows. These are also double thermal glaze windows with bug screens. They are also tinted and they slide open and closed. Here's a nice view of what the framed windows look like on the Escape 5.0. We'll take a look at the rear window later as there are a few key differences to note. Moving on from the windows, now we're going to talk about awnings. So you've got the option for a power awning, and this is really, really nice because it can be easily deployed with the press of a button. It also has a wind sensor, so if you're out for a walk or something like that, and it's bouncing around in the wind, it'll automatically retract itself back into the trailer. The standard is a manual awning, and I myself really like the manual awning because you can lower one side relative to the other to have the rain run off of your awning. Now keep in mind that your awning is principally a sunshade rather than a rain shade. We have a nice video here of Melissa setting up the manual awning and it's a good thing to show you because one person can set up the manual awning quite easily and Melissa is also on the shorter side at five foot two. Right below that awning, we have the option for an LED awning light strip. This can be paired with either awning type, so either the manual awning or the powered awning. And this is a very nice light strip that can be dimmed and turned on and off with the press of a button. Here we have the standard range hood vent, and your range hood is of course vented to the outside of the trailer, which is a really nice feature. Here we have a standard exterior LED light. You have three standard exterior LED lights on the Escape 5.0 and one optional location. And here we have your standard exterior grab handle, which makes it just that little bit easier to get in and out of the trailer. And here we have a standard exterior bubble level. We'll show you all the standard locations as we go through the trailer. Next is one of my absolute favorite options. It is the exterior shower. This allows you to access hot and cold water from outside the trailer. This is a quick connect water connection and the hose that you see here is included. Next, we'll talk about tires and rims. There are no options for your tires. The specs are on the bottom right hand side. The option is to have aluminum rims. The standard is painted white steel rims. 
and behind those are your standard mud flaps which say escape on them. Now we'll take a look at the door of the trailer. The option is a number pad entry door lock which also works with a key. The standard is a keyed entry door lock. And there is a frosted window for your privacy on the door. You have a standard screen door on every escape trailer. And here we see the standard single step. Now there is an option called the body lift kit which lifts the body of the trailer up by 2 and 5 eighths inches. So most people will opt to get the double step. Right here we have the standard exterior propane quick connect and this can hook up to any low pressure propane appliance so that you can use your trailer's propane tanks rather than having to bring one along with you. Here at the front of the trailer, we have a standard front exterior hatch, and this is different from the exterior access hatches in that it accesses to its own space. Above, we have another standard exterior bubble level. And below that hatch, we have your two 20 pound OPD propane tanks, and these have an auto change over valve to switch from one tank to the next automatically. Below, we have the two independent power leveling gears, or jacks, and these are controlled from a hatch that we'll show you very shortly here. Up above, you have the second standard exterior LED light. Give you a nice view of that kingpin in the front of the trailer. And here we have the standard 7-pin connector, and this connects into the 7-pin port at the back of your tow vehicle. Now, moving on to the driver's side of the trailer, there are a good few features to see here. First is an option of an exterior shower here on the driver's side. Right above, we have another standard bubble leveler. And to the right, we have your standard driver's side hatch. There are a few things in here. To the left are the controls for your power leveling jacks. That blue box in the middle is your DC to DC charger, which is an option included in the lithium battery. And to the right, we have the option of a toilet shutoff valve. And here we have the option for a bathroom window, either framed or frameless. This will always be frosted for your privacy. And moving on, we have your final standard exterior LED light. And down below, you have your black and gray dump valves, which are also standard. And here it is all hooked up with your sewer hose. And here is your standard 12,000 BTU furnace. There are no options for furnaces. Just to the right, you have your standard intake and exhaust for your standard three-way fridge. We'll talk about the fridge and the option when we get inside. Here we have your standard six gallon one-way hot water tank. This is fired through propane, but you have the option for a two-way, which is powered through propane or shore power. Next, we have the standard city water and hose fill. There is no option here. And my absolute favorite option is the removable power cord. So when you plug this out, you see that you have a nice sealed hole on the outside of the trailer, nice and easy to plug in and out. The standard is a fixed power cord and this has an open hole at the side of the trailer which you push the cord into or pull it out of. Very nice, down below we have the sewer hose tube holder for your sewer hose, and this comes standard. Up above, we have your emergency exit window. Now this will match with either framed or frameless windows, and we'll take a look at how it operates when we get inside. 
Now, before we take a look at the back of the trailer, we're gonna actually look at the top of the trailer. The first option that we see here is the option for a 190 watt solar panel. You can add up to two 190 watt solar panels on the Escape 5.0. So your secondary panel will be mounted at the front of the trailer right behind the emergency exit hatch. And we'll look at that when we get inside. Right behind that is the standard max fan. This is a 12 volt bi-directional fan. So we can push air in and out of the trailer. And here we see the option for an air conditioner. You have two available air conditioners, either this Coleman Mach 10 NDQ or a Dometic 11,000 BTU air conditioner. The standard is a static vent, so for all intents and purposes, this is an open hole at the top of the trailer. It's got a bug screen and a cover, and this will be pre-wired for an air conditioner. If you choose to get an air conditioner, this is where we'll put it. If not, you'll have this static vent. Now we'll move on to the rear of the trailer. Next, we have the option for the backup camera. This connects wirelessly to the included monitor, which sticks up on your dash. You have standard lower and upper LED brake and signal lights on the Escape 5.0. An option is a split opening frameless rear window. Now you can get this with either window type, either framed or frameless. So the rear window is the only one you can mix and match. The standard fixed framed rear window is fixed, so it does not open. And below is an optional exterior LED light here at the rear. Below we have another standard bubble leveler. In front of that, you have the full size spare tire with cover, which is standard, has the exact same specs as all the other tires. You also have a standard two by two inch bike rack receiver with 150 pound capacity, and this cannot be beefed up in capacity. And moving on, we have your standard battery venting. And to the right of that venting, you can put the solar port wired to charge controller, which allows you to plug in a portable solar panel into your unit. Now we'll move to the interior of the trailer before we get into the inside, I want to take a look at the left hand side here. First, you have your standard fire extinguisher. And above, you have the option for a counter extension. Now, there are different locations of where you can put these counter extensions, and they will be on the floor plan document, which is linked in the description below. This right hand switch here controls all of the lighting that runs through the middle of the trailer. All of the lights are LED standard, and they have a rating of 3500 Kelvin. The switch on the left hand side controls the exterior LED light, which is again, standard. You can also turn it on and off on the unit itself. Moving into the trailer, we'll start at the front and this is where your bed area is. It comes standard with an eight inch plush mattress and this is a queen bed, which measures 60 wide by 80 long. We'll start with the storage here at the front. This storage is mirrored on either side of the trailer. These overhead compartments run continuously together, so you get a nice, long, large storage area. You have a standard emergency exit hatch above the bed. This can be easily opened and closed as seen here. At either side of the bed, you have standard LED captain's reading lights. Now there are optional locations for these, which are also on the floor plan document. You have standard storage cubbies next to the bed on either side.
Fantastic. Moving on from here, now we'll take a look at the storage here to the right of the entry door. Standard, you have a cabinet to the right of the entry door. Now there is an option here, and we'll talk about that after we look at the rest of the storage. As I've mentioned, there's the option for the full height cabinet. This takes up the storage space of that upper cabinet that we saw and that countertop space. So you lose the countertop space. The drawer and door below are the same as we saw previously. Now let's talk about the wardrobe. This comes standard with the shelf at the top and the hanging rod right below it. You can add shelves into this wardrobe as an option. Moving on from the wardrobe, as we move down the steps, these steps are not just steps, they are also storage. So we'll open up these and show you what they look like. As we open up the second step, you'll notice that it goes back further than the second step. And that is because the storage goes back into the cavity where the third step sits. And that is because the third step cannot open because it is coincident with those doors on the left and right hand side. Now we'll move into the bathroom. This is a wet bath, meaning you have your bathroom and your shower in the same place. And this is a fully fiberglass enclosed bathroom with a shower. You have a standard 12 volt powered bathroom vent, and below you have your standard shower and sink assembly. You also have a standard toilet paper holder so that your toilet paper doesn't get wet. The option is a foot flush toilet, which you flush with your foot, and the standard is this nice hand flush toilet that you flush with your hand. There is another option, which is a composting toilet, which we'll see right here. And the really nice thing about this is that it doesn't use any water. So it's great for boondockers or dry campers. Moving on from there, we see that you have a shower plug slash drain here in the floor. And you also have your optional bathroom window that we talked about earlier. And here is the standard recessed mirrored medicine cabinet. This isn't shown, but there is also a rail to mount a shower curtain onto. Fantastic. Moving on from the bathroom here, we'll look up above to the right hand side. You have your standard carbon monoxide and smoke detector. And just to the left of the wardrobe, you have your standard analog thermostat. If you choose the Dometic AC, you will get a digital thermostat. Now we'll take a look at the fridge and microwave area. First off, the microwave is an option. We'll show you what the configuration looks like without a microwave in just a moment. Below you have your standard furnace outlet. You also have your standard propane detector here as well. Now let's take a look at the fridges. The standard fridge is a six cubic foot three-way fridge which has a separate freezer section from the fridge. When we say way, it refers to the ways that it can be powered. So through either DC, which is your batteries, AC, which is shore power, or gas, which is your propane. You have the option for a five and a half cubic foot compressor fridge. So this runs off DC only, but it's a lot more efficient when it comes to its power use. Now, when you get the compressor fridge, instead of that area where the freezer section would be of the six cubic foot fridge, you instead have this storage area above the compressor fridge. As you can see here, the compressor fridge has a built-in freezer section here at the top.
Moving on from the compressor fridge, we'll take a look at the storage to the right of the fridge. You have a lot of nice, really deep storage. Now below, of course, as I mentioned, is where your microwave would go, but if you choose not to get the microwave, you have a microwave-ready cabinet, so it'll have a 120 volt outlet in there. Below the microwave cabinet, you have what most people use as their pantry space. This comes standard with the shelf that you see here. Below the fridge and the furnace, you have two storage cabinets. Moving on from this area, we'll take a look at the kitchen. We will first take a look at the overhead cabinetry here in the kitchen. These two doors access to the same space, so it all runs continuously through. This leads to a lot of nice storage space. Moving on from the overhead cabinetry, we'll take a look at the lower cabinetry. Now keep in mind that this configuration will change based off the cooktop or oven option that you choose. The configuration that we're looking at now is for either the flush mount oven or the three burner cooktop with oven. We'll take a look at the different options in just a few moments. Now we'll take a look at the different features and options available in the kitchen area. First is the standard tank level monitoring system. This measures the tank's levels in increments of thirds. The option is the sea level two monitoring system, which measures in percentages. So it's a lot more accurate and comprehensive. Now we'll take a look at your standard vented range hood. This comes in a couple different colors depending on your cooktop or oven choice. With this black range hood, you get it with either the flush mounted oven or the three burner cooktop with oven. And you get this nice looking stainless steel range hood with either the standard two burner cooktop or the optional Eno three burner cooktop. And we'll talk about that in just a few moments. One option I'd like to call out here is the option for a stainless steel backsplash. If you do not get the stainless steel backsplash, there is no backsplash. Now we'll get into discussion on cooktops and ovens. So the first option that we see here is for a flush mounted oven. So as you see, it has three burners and it is flush with the surface. The flush mounted oven also has a light, so a light inside the oven and these cool little blue lights for the knobs. The standard is a two burner cooktop. This has a glass top, stainless steel body, and piezo electric ignition. It also includes the cast iron grate. This is a very nice flush mounted unit. The option for your cooktop is a three burner cooktop, which is made by Eno from the marine industry. This is a very sharp looking cooktop, but it is not flush mounted, so it will sit above the surface. We didn't have this configuration available at the time of filming, but this is what the cabinet configuration will look like with either the standard two burner or the Eno three burner cooktop. Next option is the three burner cooktop with oven. This is very similar to the flush mount oven in that the burners are rated the same. Key differences are that this has a different interior oven size and this unit is not flush mounted while the flush mounted unit is. The convection microwave oven is a very nice option which can be combined with either the standard two burner or the optional Eno three burner. The cabinet configuration looks a little bit different and I'm gonna show you what it looks like here now. As you can see here, these lower cabinet doors all access to the same interior space. Now these aren't as deep as the upper cabinetry because your wheel well lives in behind.
Moving on from the cooktop and oven options, we'll take a look at the stainless steel sink faucet and sink cover. And as you can see, that sink cover matches your Formica of choice. This is a very nice residential style faucet. I think it's really sharp. Fantastic, so that is the kitchen summed up. Now we're going to take a look at the dinette area. First, we're gonna look at the overhead cabinetry. Now we'll take a look at the dinette. So the option is for a U-shaped dinette, which has a seating that you see here across the back. We'll take a look at it opened up. Now, when you look on the left-hand side here, which would be the passenger side of the trailer, a couple things in here that I'll call out that black and yellow box is what's called an inverter, which is available as an option. And that white box that you see there is your battery box. So as you can see, lots of nice storage at the U-shaped portion of the U-shaped dinette. I think it's a large reason as to why people choose the U-shaped dinette. On the right-hand side here, you see the standard battery isolator switch, and it very simply isolates the batteries from your system when the trailer is in storage. That black box there is the electrical management system, which is an option. Here we see your standard five gallon one-way hot water tank. Of course, as I mentioned before, you have the option for a two-way, and there is your standard 12 volt demand water system and winterizing T-valve, which it's really at your water pump and it has a winterizing T-valve. The standard is a bench seat dinette. So as you can see, it has two opposing benches and this is really the best for people who wanna have four people sitting around the table consistently. It can get a little bit tight at the back of the U-shaped dinette. Let's take a look at the storage inside these benches. So as you can see, this trailer has a few more things inside of it. It was getting ready to go out for shipping, but you can see there's a lot of storage in that bench seat dinette, and you do have the battery in the same location as the U-shaped dinette. Looking here in this bench, there are a few things. On that left-hand side, you've got your converter, your battery isolator switch, uh, transfer switch for an inverter, and your hot water tank and water pump. Your dinette converts into a bed standard. Now, whether you get the bench seat dinette or the U-shaped dinette, it will have the same dimensions either way. We're gonna talk about the table mounting systems in just a moment, but regardless as to what table mounting system you choose, it will always convert into a bed. Fantastic, moving on from here, we see the First option for your table mounting systems is the Lagoon Adjustable Swiveling Table Mount. This is only available for U-shaped dinettes because it mounts to that back face of the dinette. And this is a really nice table as it moves around in a whole bunch of different directions. So I'd say it's best for people who want to use their dinette as a lounge area. The standard is a double post mounting system. So as you can see here, it has two posts. I would say that this is the most stable of our three table choices. It also includes a slider that you'll see here in a moment and it slides side to side nice and easily to make it easy for people to get in and out of the dinette. Now this setup does have a set screw in place so if you don't want the table to move, you can tighten up that set screw and lock it into place. Another option is the Springfield Marine Pedestal. This does include the same slider as on the standard table mounting setup, and this is a pneumatic powered piston. So this is best for people who are turning their dinette into a bed and vice versa every morning and night. Moving on from the table options, we'll take a look at what lives underneath the table. 
Here is an option, which is the charge controller. This is included when you get your 190 watt solar panel. Next, you have your standard 55 amp converter slash battery charger. Your fuse box is also located here. There's your option for an electrical management system with surge protector. That's a black box that we saw earlier on when we were looking at the U-shaped dinette. Next, we have your emergency exit window, which comes standard. Now the emergency exit window will match your primary window selection, either framed or frameless, but it will always open up as seen here. Drawdown window shades are standard in every escape trailer and they match with your wood choice. So you get these very nice white drawdown window shades with a contemporary finish and you get brown window shades with the maple and oak finishes. There are no options for window shades. These are not blackout and they are also not day night shades. And here are all of your standard lights. So you have these two lights at either side here at the dinette. You've got these lights that we saw earlier that run all the way through the center line of the trailer. You also have a standard light underneath the standard cabinet to the right of the entry door. And you have another standard light here at your kitchen space. There's a lot of nice light here inside the trailer. And as mentioned, they are all LED standard. Here's an inside view of that max fan that we talked about earlier. This is a 12 volt bi-directional fan, can push or pull air in and out of the trailer. And here is an interior view of the Coleman Mach 10 NDQ air conditioner, which is an option. And here is an internal view of that 11,000 BTU Dometic air conditioner. And as mentioned, this will come with a digital thermostat. And finally, this is your standard static vent. Fantastic. Before we finish up here, we're going to take a look at the bottom of the trailer. So there is your fresh water tank. It is a 28 gallon fresh water tank. Fresh and gray tanks live on either side of the axles. And speaking of the axles, these are tandem torsion rubberized suspension axles, and these are easy lube axles as well. We are very, very happy with these axles and they provide a really nice smooth ride for your trailer. Next up is your standard 28 gallon gray water tank. One thing that isn't shown here is your black water tank and that's because that lives underneath your toilet. It is a 30 gallon black water tank. Okay, well thank you very much for watching the video today. If you have any further questions, please feel free to email us sales at escapetrailer.com or come to our website www.escapetrailer.com or simply give us a phone call. We'll all be glad to talk to you, help you out, answer your questions, get you on your journey with a beautiful fiberglass travel trailer. Thanks everybody, I'm Carl at Escape and we're built for you.